Hi, and welcome to my beginner's guide for Mars Horizon. I'm Icon, and this video will guide you through all you need to know to be successful in the space race. I'm going to cover up the basic gameplay loop, I'm going to talk about how missions work, how the research tree works, and how you will build your HQ, and among other things I will garnish this with a few tips and tricks that I personally found quite helpful while enjoying this beautiful game. So the basic premise of the game is pretty easy. You go into space in the footsteps of one of the major space agencies of the world. Right here for the tutorial we're playing with the East ESA because I'm a European guy, you know, I'm quite biased in that topic. And you're basically aiming to be the first in all these missions. That's your... If you're managing to do that, you're really, really well off. When we click here on good old Earth, we'll see all the missions that we can do on Earth. So we start with a mere test launch in the year 1957 and the longer the game goes we get access to all manner of cool things like the space station, a space telescope, we also get to experience the first human space and all these things and that's here this menu, the milestone menu, shows you all the major milestones on the planet you're just working on. So I'm going to begin this tutorial on how to do your first mission because all the other steps will fall in place after that. So we're going to do the test launch. We see here our rewards. Support is giving you more money per month basically. The more support you gain the more funds will be flushed towards your agency. And science rewards, well I think that's pretty self-explanatory. When we do new breakthroughs, this generates new scientific, scientific insights, and that helps us with the research. Beyond that, we also get milestone ranks, which give us extra support for being the first, the second, and the third. The fourth and the fifth don't get anything. We have competing space agencies here, so we're going to just we're just going to start it's not going to be possible on higher difficulty ratings at least to be the first in every major milestone so don't worry if the other nations get something too so here we get to build our vehicle we see the mission checklist needs us to build a vehicle and set a launch date we just click over here and here we have to build a sounding rocket the sounding rocket is the most simple of spacecrafts so we're just clicking here and that's all. The upper stage and the booster are just already selected for us. We don't need to do anything. But we see here a little warning. We don't have a launch pad yet. So we confirm the construction of the Paradiso. And we see here now a summary of what we did. And I'm just checking this. And we're now going to be informed that this one will be done in two months. Good stuff. But what about that launch pad? Now we go into the research menu and we are going to go over into the building section. I just want to explain that uh, real quickly. The missions section unlocks new milestone missions as you see here. The Venus Impactor, Luna Orbit, Human in Space. These are all different milestones that we have to research first. We can't just launch in a satellite into space. We have to research that first. We want to go into the Buildings tab, though, where we will find the small launch pad. We need that to get our first uh, rocket started, because without a launch pad it's pretty hard to start rockets, don't you agree? So now we get these events here pending. We gain research, 113 per turn, per month basically, and there's our money. But our money is not that important right now. So let's click Next Month and see we have finished the research. Now we get to see our base HQ for the first time. Hello HQ. Right now we have only the HQ producing 10 points of research per month and the vehicle hangar, which is also producing research per month. So down here we can now build and here we see all the buildings we have researched so far. We are selecting the small launch pad and now we get to put it where we want to. But you see, certain buildings are better combined with others. So we see the small launch pad plays along nicely with the vehicle workshop, but it doesn't play along nicely with the HQ. I mean, it does make sense. You don't want to have a launch pad right next to the HQ, don't you agree? So this is pretty difficult to master, but easy to pick up. 
You need to memorize a lot of things to know what to build where if you want to do this efficiently. When you're starting out, just it's quite obvious. Take care that you don't uh, combine things that don't want to play together. You also can move building parts if you want to. But as you see here, we this this takes time and such. But if you have misconstructed yourself, you can do that. Also, there are obstacles here that can be cleared. So if you ever end up with too much cash on your hand, you might as well clear your construction areas. Okay, so we're building the small launch pad. We're building the rocket. What can go wrong now? So we need to research our next thing. Because I want to be up front with the satellite, we're going to research that before our first mission is done. Why not? So, now we completed the launch pad and we completed the rocket. When we do this, our vehicles sometimes gain a certain perk. There's a certain chance of that happening. It's really random and here we see the launch reliability of this project it's pretty measly 25 percent but this will all make sense in a second so we have now our rocket and now we need a launch date in this calendar we can go for the launch date it's pretty simple green means it's a good spot orange means it's a bad spot so giving you penalties on the reliability and this is altogether invalid unless you're the russians then there are no invalid uh, dates so we're going to go towards whoa if that ever happens you can go for the current date button and we're going to select that one later down the road you can also unlock training where your people use the preparation time to train up certain things pretty useful when you don't want to rush things but today we want to rush things so this is going to be our first mission we are now in the in the launch center and yes we want to launch so you get a nice and neat animation when you do that I'm not going to cancel it for the first time so now we see we have horrible conditions it's raining which is giving the launch reliability even more problems and now to understand this there's only a 24 percent chance of this thing completely failing but there's a 70% chance of some negative event and only a slim 4% chance of a normal success without any problems. We're going to do it anyways, but you can also reschedule the launch if this happens. I'm going to skip this animation. I'm sorry, but for the sake of time compression. So we only have a negative event, which is yielding us a lower mission reward, but we did it. That's the most important thing. But here comes the neat part. For every launch, you gain experience on these parts. So the next launch will have a higher reliability. And this is true for all things you launch into space in this game. You level them up and they gain reliability. We have a lower research reward for that, but such is life. So we have now completed the test launch and now let's go for some bigger goals. The artificial satellite mission is a way bigger chunk and explains a lot of the more complex game mechanics of Mars Horizon a lot better. We click here <clears throat> and then we see what we need. We need the technology, but we also need the Ezro 2B, which is a payload which, we, which will be unlocked down here. And also we will need to go into the vehicles menu. So far we have only researched the sounding rocket, which is just test rocket. And next thing we're going to build real rockets. But before we can do that, we need to wait it out. Whenever there's nothing to do for you... Okay, we unlocked now the moon. Sorry, game interrupted my explanations. So we have now unlocked the moon. Whenever there's nothing to do for you, there's this request menu. Right now we haven't unlocked any request missions, but the gist of it is you can always do optional missions if you want to. And here's the moon. As we see, the moon is going to be our first place where to go for new milestone missions. As we saw here, Earth features a lot more milestone missions than the moon, but eventually we unlock more and more of the solar system. So now we're just going to research these thingies and going to talk about these afterwards. I have a lot of research points due to the rocket I launched. We see here 208 and the Topaz only needs 150. The Emerald also needed a low amount. So we can just quickly research those 
no problem. Okay, let's get started with a real mission. We haven't unlocked the Ezro yet, so that's the last part to do. We're going to unlock the payload. I highly recommend you, the, uh, though, to look up the suggested mission vehicle parts for milestone missions before you start into them, because it's better to be prepared. Ha, the NASA failed to their test launch. Ha. So, are there finally requests? Yeah. Here's the first request uh, mission. Here we can basically just do another sounding, sounding rocket mission. Because, you know, when there's nothing to do, just keep going and spamming missions because it is really never bad for you. Okay, we have now unlocked finally the last part of that. So we have no mission slots available right now, which is a shame. So therefore, we're going to go into the research now. And as we see here, there's in the buildings menu a lot of things. And this is of something that I personally found really useful. You can go for the research lab, which unlocks training missions. I'm going to do this in this tutorial as well. But most importantly, rushing towards mission control gives you a one additional mission slot. And that's something I can highly recommend to do that as quick as possible, because the ability to do more missions at once is really, really powerful to give you a solid start. So I'm not going to explain what I'm doing here, because it's just the same that uh, as we did before, just with a higher chance of success this time. But since we have now this freight in a, in a second, and as we see here, it's really important that you manage your mission slots well to avoid things like these. So here you get to decide if you want to re research launch reliability or payload reliability. Payload reliability is something I will explain in a second because it doesn't make sense as of yet. So we're going to do the same thing again. Again, terrible conditions, but little do we care. Sorry for skipping out those animations. You can't even see if your rocket is exploding, if it's exploding. But we didn't do an explosion. We got a systems damage. We got another level up. And as you see here, those rockets gain a lot of reliability in the course of the time. Okay. So now we can build ourselves a research lab, which allows us some cool things we weren't able to before going to explain that in a sec. So finally the mission slot is open, so let's plan that mission. The artificial satellite is already has already been scheduled by other nations, so we better be quick. So here the Ezra 2B. We can this is the thing that does the mission for us ultimately. We can do different specifications for that. Up here are buttons which give you different traits, so improved communications modules, but lower reliability, and reduced build cost, but lower reliability, more power, but more build cost. These traits will make sense the more you play the game. Just want to show you the more info menu. I didn't find that at the first thing, and I found that really useful once you got used to it. But for now, we're just going to do a standard Ezra 2B, and just select that, and we're going to build that payload. Boom. Two months will pass and therefore let's just wait for that we have now also done our next research for the rocket test pad and now i'm going to rush towards the mission control because i want to be able to get that done as quick as possible so here goes the first budget review we gain more money the more support we collected and you see here, current tier, 75k per month, next tier, 100k per month. So the more support you collect, the more money per month you gain, the better missions you can run. So support is insanely important. Oh, we have a first trait. So this one has a higher reliability in missions, but it is built slower. Okay, now let's go for the vehicle, and this is going to be rocket science, simplified. So down here, we get to design the launch vehicle. It always consists out of a upper stage, which is basically what goes into space, and a booster, which is just, well, fuel, and just propels you into space. Most of the time, the boosters get dropped after the start. So right here, we can select a couple of new uh, modules. You see they are all locked behind science icons. We only have unlocked the topaz. Over here is the most important information. We see what our upper stage has to offer, a capacity and the 
maximum destination. And over here we see the requirements. So requirement 40 kilo, all good. If we check out the other upper stages, we see here way higher capacities, higher destinations, and so on. Pretty nifty to know, but always try to fulfill these things. Okay, now for the booster. I mean, we only researched one thing, so it's quite easy, but you see here the same thing. Capacity, minimum, and available. It's all cool. We have four months build time, so let's go for that. If you want to go for this kind of mission more often on repeatable secondary uh, optional missions, you can also save those designs to load them later if you don't want to construct the same rocket again and again and again and again. Because with these request missions, you can do things quite often. And while a sounding missile rocket is really easy to construct, the other things are not. OK, we have now constructed our research lab but let's also build a rocket test pad to have a higher launch reliability. I like that a lot. So as we see here, sometimes building parts are even neutral to each other, as this one is. And here we can get the best of two worlds. Let's do that. Okay. So now we only have to wait until our building parts are done. And the rocket test pad has been finished too. And the vehicle is complete. No perks gained, and let's go for the launch preparations. This is all basically the same, but this time we can go for training. With training, you can select different training types. We can either go for science training. So every month we delay our launch. We now will gain 5% more science. Or we go for launch reliability training, where we gain more percentage bonus per month we delay the start I'd highly recommend to always do this because you will always just gain something out of that so Japan wants to do that in July we're going to do that in June as we see here just want to illustrate that the reliability goes up with every month we schedule that behind but it is capped at a certain point but we already gained three percent even while we're rushing that which is good that's why I uh, can't recommend these these buildings enough. The research lab is really a benefit. Overall, when we now go, and I want to summarize this whole mission topic with for this tutorial at this point, when you go down for deeper missions and more complicated missions, right, here's the better point to illustrate, always try to get the payload research force first and the mission vehicle parts first. When we go for mission vehicle parts down here, things are going to be more complicated. As you see here, we have now three different types of them available. You only need to research two different types to unlock the next tier. They are basically always more powerful once they go down one, one level of the diagram. But here, when you check these out, the Algol has a has a lower launch reliability compared to the Jupiter, but also a lower build time and a lower cost. Here, you really need to select what fits your playstyle best. It's quite important to mention that ultimately you want to specialize on some of these vehicles because, as we saw before, they gain levels. They gain reliability the more often you use them. And researching too many of those is not only spending your science real quick, it's also making your leveling inefficient. And that's where the game starts to be really complex. So <clears throat> down here, when you want to go for more complicated missions, also take care that you go down the new buildings there. There's lots of really, really interesting things that I don't want to spoil here, because basically it all works like that. You research new buildings, you unlock new features, and these features are ultimately mandatory for higher tiered missions. So just read those tooltips, they're really, really well explaining things. Okay, but now let's get back to the last part of this tutorial. We're going to launch something bigger into space, not only a rocket, but also something with a payload. And that's where the next part of the game is there. So we have good conditions. You see, there's also good conditions. Not only bad conditions. And let's start that thing. Pray to God it doesn't explode while it starts. And... Okay, we have no bad, con no bad things. If you manage to go into that green area, you even get some bonuses for your missions. As we see here, with higher reliability parts, they gain less reliability per level up. But it's still really 
awesome to gain those bonuses. So now we are in the actual mission. Our artificial satellite has to do things before the mission is completed, and that's to collect communications and data. Here comes the next mini game, which is at first really simple, but this branches out into some really cool and difficult nightmare. <laughs> So, we see here we have to collect two units of communications, two units of data. We get bonus rewards if we gain three data and three communications, so we want to aim for that always. Down here is our command box. We see we can do two commands per turn. We have four turns remaining. So, simplified, we're going to just go for this. We're investing one unit of energy, which is up here, and get out one unit of comms. So we want to do that. Let's generate one unit of comps and one unit of data. So we confirm those commands. If you ever do something wrong, you can undo your last command with that thing or undo the entire command bar with that one. There are way more commands with uh, more sophisticated missions. So now here you, we roll again the success of the event where we also see we completed that successfully. The turn is now getting resolved. And now we have a negative event which is also worth mentioning. So when negative events happen, you're basically getting denied of your reward unless you invest one extra energy, which is always annoying, but we're going to do that now. So as we see here, one energy point remaining, which is not really enough. So we're going to go to recharge our power. You can always spend your turns to recharge your power. So here we see now the more sophisticated options. We can invest one data to transform, one comms to transform it into one data. We can go you use one data to transform it into two comms. There's a lot of things to do, and that's where the game gets really complicated on me, but I like that. So we're regenerating power now and another negative event. So we resist that. And if you want to t be sure that you don't get punished too hard, always do your turns with at least one power uh, in your in your hand. So we're going to do this turn here. I'm going to spend one of my communications to gain three data. So we're going to be good on that department. So you can also click to speed up that roll. And wow, this is by far the most unlucky man in space you've ever seen. But we're going to recharge this and do another signal return test and pray to God that we don't be uh, don't get unlucky this time. But we do. Wow. So we have to accept that we got denied out of our bonus reward. You will do that better. This is the mini game you will do on missions. This does get more and more complicated the higher tiered your missions are. And as you saw here, this was a one stage mission. Higher sophisticated missions give you like two or three of that mini games in a row to do all the necessary things. This is really cool and fun, and we did it. We have launched our first artificial satellite. So from here on, the game continues like that. You have to select down here what kind of mission you want to take, the first animal into space or lunar orbit, and this branches out more and more. I want to summarize here. Really interesting to know is that in every era, there's a era completion reward. So that means for everything for every development we do during these eras, we gain bonuses. So if we have eight technologies of era eight, we gain obstruction removal cost. If we gain 13 vehicle techs, we have more launch reliability and so on. This goes on with all the eras and sums up a little nice bonus. So that's that. That's all you need to know to brave space. You will face more and more complicated things down the road it doesn't stay that simple you gain you will gain you will have to gain more and more different resources in those mini games there's as you saw here more and more different uh, vehicles to to build there's a lot of buildings to go for and for example to go for the first human in space you will also need the astronaut training facility which is for example not even really mentioned there so there's a lot of uh, nasty things to discover alongside of this and it's up to you to find that out this game has a high replayability due to that because you can optimize things a lot and if it does bother you how the game works in the option menu options menu you can also lower the difficulties or increase them if you feel like the game is too easy for you 
So, I hope that was kind of helpful for you. The tutorial of this game is in, is in itself quite awesome, but I felt like it, let, it didn't get me into the flow of the game properly. I hope that was something I managed to do. Last thing, read that Spacepedia if you are into astronomy and stuff. There's really, really high value information there because this game has been sponsored and, uh, no, not sponsored, but the actual space agencies of the world are involved in that one. So this information here is crisp, top notch, and this game is highly realistic in what it does. Alrighty, drop me your comments down below. If there's any question left over there, just ask away. I'd be happy to answer. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you liked it because this helps me to beat the algorithm mini game. And of course, if you like that content, check out my channel. I do daily videos, so just subscribe, turn on those notifications, and you won't miss anything in the future. Also hidden down there in the description, you will find my Twitch channel where I do daily streams, so you might want to check that out too. And last but not least, to end this advertisement block, you will also find ways and means to support me via tips, coffee, or whatever seems fit to you. But don't you worry, the biggest support has already been done. Thank you so much for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.